everyone, I'm Caroline and I'm the Wildlife Park Manager here at Askin Brown Wildlife and Conservation Park and I'm here today to answer the question, what is an invertebrate? An invertebrate is an animal which doesn't have a backbone. More than 90% of all living animal species are invertebrates, so it's an incredibly diverse group. They all belong to the kingdom Animalia and can be split into soft-bodied and hard-bodied categories. Members of this group include the protozoa, which are single-celled organisms, flatworms, including tapeworms and flukes, annelid worms, including earthworms and leeches, echinoderms, including starfish and sea urchins, cilantrids, including jellyfish and sea anemones, mollusks, including snails and limpets, arachnids, including spiders and scorpions, crustaceans, including crabs and lobsters, insects, including bees and beetles, and myriapods, including centipedes and millipedes. This group of animals is vitally important in sustaining other life, either by being food for other organisms or in the instance of pollinators such as bees in helping us to produce our crops. One of the most incredible facts about invertebrates is that they can be as microscopically small as a bacteria or they could be as monstrously huge as a giant squid. Invertebrate history. The first invertebrates are thought to have evolved around one billion years ago and were soft-bodied, simple organisms. The Cambrian explosion occurred around 450 million years ago and is thought to be the starting point of the fossil records for all of today's diversity, including us. Around 300 million years ago, during the Carboniferous period, giant invertebrates such as Arthropleura, a relative of today's millipedes, and Meganeura, a relative of today's dragonfly, flourished in an oxygen-rich environment that allowed invertebrates to get very, very big. Arthropleura could reach lengths of over three meters, and Meganeura's wingspan could reach 75 centimeters. Adaptable invertebrates. Invertebrates are highly adaptable. That means they can adjust to changing conditions quickly. This means that you find invertebrates in a wide variety of habitats. Some live in water, but you also find them in the desert as well. Did you know ponds are absolutely full of invertebrate life? Ours here at the Wildlife Park certainly is. Another way that invertebrates are so successful is that they're often opportunistic feeders which means they're not very fussy. Invertebrates have developed a wide range of different feeding strategies, from herbivores that mostly feed on plant matter, to detritivores that eat decaying organic material, such as poo, rotting leaves and twigs, or even dead animals, and other animals that will catch their prey and even eat other invertebrates. Many invertebrates are also able to fly, which opens up new opportunities to reach food, water and shelter. What invertebrates do we have at the zoo? Here at the Wildlife Park, we have quite a collection of invertebrates, some in places you might not expect. We have our invertebrate room, where most of our tiniest residents from all over the world live. You might see our stick insects, cockroaches, and even some super cool spiders. We have a display colony of leafcutter ants as well, that can be seen from the foyer, so do watch out for those. We also have our fish tanks, which have their own invertebrates. And you might spot anemones, snails, starfish and shrimp. And if you do come along to one of our Meet the Bugs sessions, then you might be able to meet some up close and personal. That's it from me for today. I hope you've enjoyed learning about invertebrates. They're certainly some of my favourite animals. Do keep an eye on our YouTube channel and subscribe if you want to watch more of our videos all about the animals here at the Wildlife Park. And remember, keep learning to protect nature.